So as Ian mentioned earlier, WinFX is really a collection of APIs that allow user developers to build applications that target Longhorn Server, Windows Vista, as well as the existing operating systems like XP and Server 2003. Is anybody using Server 2003 out there today? Yeah, lots of hands. So that's really pretty significant because what that allows you to do as developers is build applications today that target the shipping operating systems and have a roadmap towards the future. So your applications, once you build on WinFX, will be ready for Windows Vista and ready for Longhorn Server as it's available. So in this demo, we're going to look at how those three core technologies of WinFX come together in a single scenario. First, we'll see how the Windows Presentation Foundation can be used to build a compelling user experience for end users. Then we'll also see how the Windows Workflow Foundation can be used to model the control flow and rules as part of an application. Finally, we'll see how Windows Communication Foundation provides a single unified API for providing secure and secure and reliable communications inside of an application. What number is it? Uh, two. Look at that. So in this scenario, we'll see how a fictitious company named Fabricam has built a CRM solution using some of these technologies. This CRM solution allows Fabricam, a hosting solutions provider, to be able to manage some of their customers, their opportunities, as well as manage new quotes. I'll play the role of an account manager and just go ahead and start up the Fabricam application. Here you can see this, this application has a user experience that's quite a bit different from some of the user experiences that you have today on Windows. So first of all, you can see that we can navigate through this application and we can access standard CRM-like functionality. We can go and see the different products and services that Fabricam provides. We can go and manage some of the different accounts, create and manage new quotes, as well as view some of the financial data that relates to the opportunities that this account manager is tracking. Look at that. It's all Vista-like. Look at that. It's all... Kind of the glossy feel, yeah. the transparency. If I had yeah. a developer that spent all his time doing that, I'd fire him. But no. well, well, I do service stuff, you know. There, there, are <laughs> these, there actually are these things called designers out there oh, so really? that, can, okay. that can build these compelling user experiences. So we'll show you our new version of uh, user interface for server management. It's coming up in a little while. We've got a great, some great does, ideas. Does it have a nice classy background? No, okay. no. It's reinventing the 70s. Uh. Well, in this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going first to go in and see some of the standard hosting plans that Fabricam provides. Fabricam, like most hosting solution providers, has some, some predefined plans that range from web farm or shared hosting to virtual server hosting. In this case, however, we're working with a customer that's asking for a plan that's outside, um, outside of our, our normal services. So I'll go ahead and select the nearest plan here and go ahead and create a new customized quote. Here I can go and fill in the information related to the customer we're working with, their company information, as well as fill in the details related to this specific request. And for my joke has been that, you know, if they're charging that much, that's why you haven't heard of them. Um, but. <laughs> well, so in this case, we'll actually enter in some of the custom data. And this particular customer has asked for a virtual server instance running Longhorn Server. Super. You might have noticed that we've also discounted the prices a little bit. So we dropped the prices down to 99 bucks a month. So before we go ahead and submit this quote, let me explain a little bit about what's going to happen here behind the scenes. At this point, we're running this Windows Presentation Foundation application. This application is then going to communicate with a web service that's been developed using the Windows Communication Foundation. That service is going to do two things. It's first going to start up a new workflow that's going to manage the end-to-end -end process of this quote through various stages of approval as well as the outbound communications with the customer and the inbound communications with the various databases inside the Fabricam um, system. All stuff just built into Longhorn Server. All the technology is available in Longhorn Server. Yep. yep. The other thing this service is going to do is it's actually going to set up a publish and subscribe channel so that this application can automatically receive updates as they're occurring on the back end system. So let's go ahead and submit that quote. So here you can see we've submitted the quote. And if we go over to the Manage Quotes window, we can see that our quote's currently in a status of quote verification. What's actually happening here sure. is our quote has actually been validated. Our discount policies, our discount policies have been applied and a couple of emails have been generated. You notice they're switched it over changed. to a different status? Yep. Yeah. 
So our workflow is actually processing on the back end. And right now, we've delivered two emails. We sent an email to the head of systems engineering, asking them to verify this quote. And we've also sent an email to the sales manager, also, also asking them to review this quote and approve or reject the quote. And luckily, because Fabricam is a really big organization, you're both, uh, both of those people. You got uh, it. Okay. I'm wearing multiple hats. Multiple yeah. hats. So do a quick send and receive there. And yeah. you notice that we have a couple different emails that have been delivered here inside of Outlook. So I'll just go ahead and select one of these emails. And if I browse through this, you can see some of the details about the quote. Again, a virtual server instance running Windows Server Longhorn, and of course, WinFX. Let me just go ahead and approve that quote request. And you'll notice that we've uh, just confirmed our, our, uh, our approval. If we switch back over, you can see, that, see some of the quotes that are in the system. Let's go ahead and just enter in another quote here. Let's go ahead and submit another one. Once again, it's going, you see it's going through the quote verification stage, generating a couple emails. And once again, you see the email to sales engineer as well as to uh, the head of systems engineering. We switch back over. You'll notice that this quote is actually switched over to the status of legal review. In other words, we've progressed to the next step within our workflow. But you, it's not really visual, is it? No, no. I, I, don't, I don't, as the end user, I don't understand why it's going to legal review. What's the story there? Yeah, it's, it's just changing the status. You'd expect in an application this flashy to have a more interactive experience. I guess so we could you? use that view workflow status, couldn't we? Well, There's yeah. a button there, isn't it? Why don't, that. We, oh. why don't we go ahead and go into that? Sometimes it can be nice to provide a visual representation of what's happening behind the scenes to the end users. Ooh. In this case, what we're actually doing is we're rehosting a control that's provided by Windows Workflow Foundation. This control provides a view of the workflow that can be embedded inside of your own custom applications. You notice here that our workflow is actually at the stage of legal review. Right now, we're waiting on the legal representative to go in and approve or reject the quote. If you can just go over to Outlook there for me. Uh, we also have a legal rep. Uh, yeah. So we'll just do a oh, quick look, receive we have a there. lawyer as well. And, and select legal email. And you'll notice that legal was delivered an email with some of the same data related to the quote. Again, we'll go ahead and approve that quote request. Go back into fa our Fabricam application. And you can notice that our application now is progressing through the final stages of the workflow. So do I have to go and set up a whole bunch of different tools to go and plan this out in the first place? Or what's the story? Great question. So okay. you've kind of seen the user's experience of this scenario. Why don't we dive into the code now and see how these technology are applied inside of this scenario and how they all come together in, able to, in order to make this work. So let's go over here in Visual Studio 2005. Hey, we've seen that before. Yeah. That's actually the same design control that we had inside of our WPF application. In this case, though, it's integrated inside of Visual Studio 2005. So a developer can actually use that design control inside Visual Studio 2005 and use Visual Studio 2005 as their primary development experience for building workflows. One difference you'll notice here, Ian, is that I can actually drill into the actual workflows and see the steps that are occurring behind each one of those stages or states. We refer to these steps as activities within the workflow. Here you can see that we're going to do things such as generate emails, execute rule policies, do things like save the, rec save the quote out to the database, and even perform decision logic inside of our workflow. For example, we'll determine if this quote is valid, and if so, then we'll distribute those emails to both the sales manager and head of systems engineering. And finally, transition over to the next stage within our workflow. However, if that quote for some reason is invalid, then we'll transition over to an on-hold stage where we're waiting for someone to manually go correct that quote and continue the workflow along. If I navigate back up to the top level view, you'll notice here in our workflow that we're always going through the legal approval stage. But there's been some changes in this scenario with Fabricam's business policies that allow us to bypass legal approval. So why don't I go ahead and drill in here to the start legal review. And you can see here we're always generating that email. What I want to do now is customize this workflow to implement some of that new business logic. So what I'll first do is just go over to the toolbox here. And inside the toolbox, what you can see is some of those activities I was referring to. Let me just pin my toolbox down here. 
And you can see here the Windows workflow category. The Windows workflow category of activities represents the activities that are provided with Windows Workflow Foundation. We call them the base activity library. So you notice there's things in here for like communications and control flow. What's also important though is that you can develop your own activities and just include them in the toolbar. For example, here's some of the activities that are available out there in the developer community today that you can go and download. We're also working with a lot of different component vendors that are building activities targeted at Windows Workflow Foundation. In this case, what I actually want to do is go ahead and add in some decision logic. So I'll add in an if-else activity inside the workflow. This basically represents an if-else statement like you would have in C Sharp or Visual Basic Code. What I'm going to do here this first... This really isn't fair, you know. Why's that? Because it's like, in my day it would have been, we would have spent half a day writing that in Vi and, you know, using a really crappy editor and things like that, and now you get to drag stuff. Kids right. these days, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so you'll notice I also have a little smart tag. Look at that. I imagine you didn't have smart tags. No, no, okay. no, no. So I can go you ahead didn't and... didn't even have icons. You didn't have icons. Uh. <laughs> so if I pull up the smart tag, you'll notice that I have a property that hasn't been set on this activity. Let me go ahead and set that property now. That property is the condition. And what I can do here is I can actually leverage rule-based conditions directly within workflow. So I can go ahead and add a new condition. And in this case, I want to determine if the dollar amount, the total dollar amount for the quote is less, is, I'm sorry, greater than $10,000, then I'm going to require legal approval. So let me go ahead and just type in a little bit of logic here. Order complete. Look at that. So I'll just say, if the quote amount is greater than $10,000, I'll add in that condition. And you'll notice that condition has now been applied. Now let me just drag up the send email activity into that branch. And then let me also add in another activity. So let's say that if the dollar amount is less than $10,000, we're just going to skip legal approval. I'll just configure this activity to skip ahead to the quote processing stage. You'll notice that if I go back to the top level view of the workflow, we've now added in this line that shows that we're going to transition directly from the legal step or the legal stage directly into quote processing thereby bypassing the legal approval uh, where the dollar amount is less than $10,000. So that's how Windows Workflow Foundation has been integrated into the scenario. Now let me show you how Windows Communication Foundation provides a single unified API for communications inside of this scenario. First thing I want to show you is what we call the service contract for one of the WCF services that's been defined. This contract basically describes the operations that are available for the service. You can see here some of the operations are pretty basic. Things like retrieving an individual quote, or maybe retrieving a list of quotes, or saving a quote out to the database. You'll notice in here, though, that there's nothing related to the protocols being used or the security requirements for a service. What WCF really does is it separates out all of that configuration information, all that information about which protocols am I going to use, and what are the security requirements from the actual implementation of a WCF service? That information is typically specified in the configuration file. So here if I switch over to the config file for the application, you can see here that same quote service as it's been configured. Here you can also see that this service is being exposed across HTTP at a specific address, and we're using this WSHTTP binding. Basically what this means is that this service is going to be accessible using SOAP messages across HTTP. SOAP messages that, can, that utilize the WS security uh, standard as well as several other WS star specifications. What's really powerful though is I can take that same service and I can add on another endpoint that supports another protocol. So for example, just by doing a little bit of copy paste logic in here, I can add in support for TCP. Or add in several other bindings to support other protocols. I can even extend it and support a proprietary protocol that I want to inside of Windows, Windows Communication Foundation. So I know some of you might be, get a little scared with dealing with this much, uh, this much XML in a configuration file. And certainly IT pros and administrators don't want to have to muck around XML files. So rest assured, there's actually a configuration editor tool inside of the Windows SDK that allows you to visually set some of these properties 
and it can generate out the config files. In the updated version of that tool, there's also a wizard that allows you to generate the initial files for your application. The final thing I want to show you is how WCF makes it easier to operate and trace and identify problems within these service-oriented systems. You can imagine as you begin building applications that are really just have these services scattered throughout the application, it can become pretty challenging to identify problems as they occur. It can also become, prob it can also become challenging to kind of have the end-to-end -end view of the interactions within the application. If I scroll down here in the config file, you'll notice a few additional things. For one, I've enabled message logging, a feature of WCF that allows us to capture the actual messages that are being transmitted in, into and out of the service. I've also enabled activity tracing. Basically what this means is as my service is running, it's generating out a couple files. It's generating out a trace log file, and it's generating out a message log file. What I can do now is I can just go back to my desktop, and there I have a shortcut to another utility that's included in the Windows SDK. This is the Service Trace Viewer. Inside a Service Trace Viewer, you can basically just open up those files and see some of their contents. So if I open up this file, you can see all the different tracing information that's being sent through, from WCF and being recorded from WCF into those files. So that will really help writing an application, testing it, going and finding Absolutely. out what go, what's going wrong. And not just for developers, right? Yeah. But for the IT pro folks. Yeah, yeah. Right? So what we can do here is we can see some of these different trace, um, trace entries. And if I scroll down here, you can see this initial entry um, that indicates this is the quote request that's been sent from our Fabricam application, our CRM application, to our service. But you know that data just is kind of hard it's kind of, to it's kind of understand hard. what's going on, right? Well, nobody out there can see it. It's yeah. sort of impossible so, to see. Yeah. Why don't I go over and switch over here to the graph view? And on the graph view, what you can see here is the interaction between the different components inside the Fabricam solution. In the middle column here, you see the Fabricam presentation application, the CRM application that was developed using the Windows Presentation Foundation. You can also see the messages that were generated by that application. So if I select this message here and I scroll down in this view, I can actually see the contents of the message at, that was sent in. The virtual server instance running Windows Server Longhorn with WinFX and IS7. Right? So this is the message sent from our client application to our service. Then we can look at that message that's, that's received by the service and finally look at the message that's sent back in response to that call to create a new quote. And if I scroll down here, you'll notice there's the quote number that was returned to our client application. What this really provides is that end-to-end -end tracing view of the different service interactions that are happening with our application. So, and all I had to do to enable this was flip a few switches inside the config file. So that's why I really want to show you around, around this scenario, how those three technologies come together. Windows Presentation Foundation, Windows Workflow Foundation, and Windows Communication Foundation. The final thing I want to leave you with is that Windows Workflow Foundation and Communication Foundation have Go Live licenses available for them today. So once again, you can start developing with the technologies today inside of your applications, target the existing operating systems, and be ready for Longhorn Server once it's available. Thanks a lot. Hey, James, are you talking? When are you talking? I'm not talking. You're not so, talking. But I will be Where, in the Q&A area. Is there any sessions that uh, anybody's so jumping in? There will be an app server session that Doug Purdy is giving. Uh, a little bit later today, and there's actually several other sessions on WF and WCF as well. Super. So, thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks, James.